Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our king and when he comes again may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Bless these branches, O Lord, and those who carry them, and our remembrance of your Son's passion this day. And grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life everlasting through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the Holy innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together the intro it for this day on the insert in your bullet. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of of the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh, 
and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the Sunday of the Passion is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We sing together the gradual as printed on the insert in your bullet. Christ entered once for all into the holy places by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way Jesus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. We'll hear that read in just a few moments now. About this man who entered Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna. This man who dined with the poor and lepers and sinners. This man who was betrayed by one of his own. This man was the Son of God. This man who celebrated the Passover with his disciples transforming it by his words and then by his death to a new meal, a new food. This man who told his closest disciples he would deny him three times. This man who prayed alone in sorrow and distress, this man was the Son of God. This man who was treated as a dangerous criminal, this man who was kissed, not with a kiss of love, but of betrayal. This man who would not defend himself and was abandoned by all. This man was the Son of God. This man who was accused by false witnesses. This man who not only confessed who he truly was. This man who was convicted of blasphemy for speaking the truth. This man was the Son of God. This man who was mocked, spit on, and struck by the soldiers. This man who was on trial but charged with no crime. This man who was traded for a murderer and an insurrectionist. This man was the Son of God. This man who was scourged. This man who was robed in a purple cloak and crowned with thorns. This man who was once again struck and spit on and mocked and shamed. This man was the Son of God. This man who bore his own cross but stumbled under its weight. This man who was stripped of his garments this man who was nailed to a cross. This man was the Son of God. This man who was then taunted and derided by all who passed by and saw him hanging in shame. This man who was scorned by the chief priests and scribes. This man who could have saved himself but did not. This man was the Son of God. This man on whom the sun refused to shine for three hours. This man who was forsaken by God. This man who was given sour wine to drink. This man was the son of God. This man who uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. This man whose lifeless body was then taken down from the cross. This man who was laid in a tomb. This man was the Son of God. This man who did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. This man who made himself nothing. This man who was perfectly obedient even to the point of death. This man was the Son of God. This Son of God did this all for you. Who else has given you so much? Who else loves you like this? Who else knows all your worst and gives you his best? Who else but the Son of God? And what does he ask of you, O oh Christian? Things equally great, equal in magnitude to this? Or just to love him and to love 
your name. To honor him as holy with your life. To pray and give him thanks. To help and care for others. Is this too much for us? Taking a look at your life? My life? Apparently so. Oh, wretched men and women, we are. So where is your cross? It is here. This man is on it. The Son of God. For he could not bear to see you on it. So on it, he hung for you. In your place. With your sin. The disciples' sin. Pilate's sin. The chief priests sin, the scribes sin, the soldiers sin, all sin, that all may live. For now, God has highly exalted him. God has bestowed on him the name that is above every name. To him, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. For he is not dead, but alive risen from the tomb in which Joseph laid him. So we do not confess with the centurion. We do not confess, truly this man was the Son of God. No, our confession is different. So we confess, truly this man is the Son of God. This man who now forgives your sins. This man who baptizes and washes sinners clean. This man who feeds us with his own body and blood. This man is the Son of God. This man who gives us his spirit. This man who has brought you here today. This man who is seated in glory yet still serving sinners in his love. This man is the Son of God. This man who is all-knowing, but remembers your sin no more. This man who is all-present, but puts himself here for you. This man who is all-powerful, but uses his power not to punish, but to save. This man is, is the Son of God. This man who promised to come again for you to take you home. This man who bids you depart in peace. This man who has put his name on you and proclaimed, you are mine. This man is the Son of God. Your God. Your Lord. Your Savior. So now we will hear all this. Today and all this week, the account of his passion. His passion, which means his suffering, but this passion is because of his passion for you. That is the why. Why he does all this, though it makes no sense. Yet it is true. And so worthy for us to ponder. Yes, Jesus, I will ponder now on your holy passion. I will ponder now on your holy passion with your 
your spirit me endow for such meditation. Grant that I in love and faith may the image cherish of your suffering, pain, and death. I may not perish. Make me see your great distress, anguish and affliction, and stripes and wretchedness, and your Make me see how scourge and rod, spear and nails did wound you, how for them you died, O God, who with thorns had crowned you. Yet, O Lord, not thus alone, make me see your passion, but its cause to me make known, and its termination. Ah, I also and my sin your deep affliction. This indeed the cause has been of your crucifixion. Grant that I your passion view with repentant grief. Let me not bring shame to you by unholy living. How could I refuse to shun every sinful pleasure since for me God's only Son suffered without measure. If my sins give me alarm and my conscience grieve me, let your cross my fear disarm. Peace of conscience give me, help me see forgiveness won by your holy passion. If for me he slays his son, God must have compassion.
Passion According to St. Mark. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignant, indignantly, Why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? and he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John 
and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were, he were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. And they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. Yet even about this their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. 
but he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner from whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed, and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last.
and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. the glorious battle, sing the ending of the fray. Now above the cross the trophy, sound the loud triumphant lay. Tell how Christ the world's Redeemer has a victory Tom won the day. Tell how when at length the fullness of the appointed time was come, he the word was born of woman, left for us his father's home. Place the path of true obedience, shown as light amidst the gloom. Thus with thirty years accomplished, he went forth from Nazareth. Destined, dedicated, willing, did his work and met his death. Like a lamb he humbly yielded, on the cross his dying breath. Faithful cross, true sign of triumph, before all the noblest tree. None in foliage, none in blossom, none in fruit thine equal be. Symbol of the world's redemption for the weight that hung on thee. Our offering is now received.
Please rise for prayer. Let us pray to the Lord whose passion we remember this week for all the baptized in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. For the church of our Lord Jesus Christ throughout the world, that our faith would ever remain fixed on Jesus' death for our salvation, and that this gospel would be proclaimed and lived in all the world until he comes again in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we would have the mind of Christ to humble ourselves, patiently waiting for his exalting, and love one another as he has loved us. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord would bless our meditation this holy week, strengthen us in faith, and bring us joyfully to the celebration of his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For those fighting the wildfires so close to us here, for wisdom, strength, and success, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord would bless and protect all families, fathers, mothers, husbands, wives, and children, filling them with his love and forgiveness for one another, and that they remain faithful unto death, let us pray to the Lord. For all who are suffering in this world and life, that they would know the healing and peace of the Lord and rely on Him in every time of need, especially for Jay in his surgery this week, and for Joel, Karis, Jackie, Neely, Ruth, Audra, Dan, Bernard, and George. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who govern us, for wisdom and guidance, for honesty and integrity, for courage and strength, and that all be done for the praise and protection of the good and the punishment of the evil, let us pray to the Lord. For those who lead our church, especially Matthew and Valdemar, for the wisdom, guidance, and gifts they need and for joy in their service, let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord would bless our congregation, strengthening us and granting us growth in His Word, enabling us to care for others in word and deed, and providing for the work He has given us to do. Let us pray to the Lord. For worthy reception of Christ's body and blood, that as He once entered Jerusalem, to cries of Hosanna, so we may receive him according to his promises for the forgiveness of our sins and in the unity of a true confession. Let us pray to the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy, not to condemn, but to save. Hear our prayers, and grant us all you know we need, and all that is for our good. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who was born a Son of Man, that we might be born from above as sons and daughters of God, and to now live and reign with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We continue on page 194, the order of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let 
let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Warm welcome to you all. The Lord be with you. So um, the announcements are primarily the gold insert in your bulletin, our Holy Week schedule for this week. So please take notice of that. We have uh, something for you every day this week. So I hope you will join us for all of it. Um, to kind of go through Holy Week all step by step is really adds to the joy of Easter. If you just come today and then you come again on Easter, you really kind of miss a lot of the story and a lot of the uh, meaning of the liturgy. So uh, we have our Vespers Monday through Wednesday. That's online only at 7 o'clock. So you can tune in. All the service will be online there uh, in, in the files, the service files that you need um, to kind of prepare us for Holy Week, the, the sacred triduum, the last three days. And then Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday, of course, we remember our Lord's gift of his supper, but also then at the end of the service, the stripping of the altar as they uh, stripped Christ and led him away, um, uh, arrested him. So you, you kind of get that visual, and then our, our keyboard um, fades out, and we uh, no longer have music uh, for the rest of our um, Lenten tide. And then Good Friday, our service of darkness, uh, as the candles go out one by one. And then our great vigil of Easter, if you've never been to one, encourage you to come. If you have been, you know, come. Uh, it's just a, a little taste of Easter. Um, uh, not the full-blown Easter yet. We're uh, not going to sing the A word yet. Um, and it's just, just a little, little joy. And we hear the Old Testament stories and how Christ fulfilled it all for us. And then, of course, the big joy of Easter. So I hope you'll come to all of it and take advantage of it um, for your um, Holy Week uh, meditation. Uh, of course, we still have school chapel next this coming week, so join us for that at 8.30, uh, Tuesday and Thursday, um, and then our morning prayer. So lots of opportunities for you to be in the Word this week. Don't forget the Lenten Life Calendar also this week, last week, and if you haven't joined us in our congregational alms, there's still time to do that. Um, last Monday, tomorrow, um, Go to Malik's, and the cause is the uh, volunteer fire department very close to them. So um, join us there for a good meal. Choir is going to be rehearsing a little bit. Um, second? Choir, sec, choir goes second, so you can grab something to eat, say hi, uh, while uh, other people practice, and then uh, the choir is going to rehearse a little bit. Um, we do have some food downstairs, I think, so join us for that. Yes, yes, thank you to our organist um, for jumping in and, and uh, uh, um, being a blessing to us. Anything else? Let us rise and say our table prayer. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Bless us and these thy gifts, which we receive from your bountiful goodness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Exactly.